Hey there, everybody. Matt Carter here. And Jessica Carter from CarterMatt.com. We are here to try to pick through all of our emotions following the series finale of Criminal Minds. We're going to talk about everything that happened. We'll react to the ending mm -hmm. and try to just pick up the pieces on what I still think is a really good finale. Yeah, it was. I actually, I, I don't think it's perfect, but I don't think, I think almost no series finales are perfect. And I think this is probably the hardest job for any show to do is actually end and end well. I feel like it represents really well what Criminal Minds was. Mm -hmm. It was a celebration. Yep. It was nostalgic. I mean, I think the only thing that we were missing was boys to men showing up and performing It's So Hard to Say Goodbye to Yesterday, because otherwise... No, I disagree. <laughs> I think that the song that they chose when everyone was partying, We Could Be Heroes, was you, perfect. You get them I both. I loved it. No way. That was such a good song. They are heroes. I loved that so much. This it, this was a really good finale for just putting us through all of the feels. And I mean, I never thought that Spencer was going to die. No. It just felt like it must have been some sort of like thing in their heads that before we said goodbye to Criminal Minds, we had to almost kill Reed at least one more time. Well, and as we saw, it was important to decisions of Garcia, so. Yeah, well, we're going to break down everything in this finale, but uh, before we do, if you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any other updates. I think first and foremost, what I liked about the finale is... We did really see a lot of tip of the caps to past seasons of the show. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe they did a little bit too much in kind of looking at the early days, more so than I necessarily needed, but it was still good to see Gideon, mm -hmm. Hotch. Yeah, like Morgan. All, yeah, like all of these people who we think about as, okay, you guys are somewhat the OGs. You were there in the early days. Yeah, I think it was really important that that was included, that if they weren't going to bring any anyone back and they weren't going to bring Hodge back, they weren't going to bring Morgan back, there had to be something in this these episodes that was going to give a little bit of homage to them, and, and it was there. Is it disorienting for you to see Mandy Patinkin without a beard? Yeah, because it is to me now. It's <laughs> yeah, like, oh, what, what happened to Saul's beard? That's all I think of at this point. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciated being able to see them, and I, I really got the sense. I mean, this episode was done by Eric Messer and Kirsten mm -hmm. Banksness, and they obviously love this show, and I think they have a really sort of good eye to what people are wanting to see. Yeah, there was a lot of callbacks and heart with that. To, to For people who have been watching it forever, there was stuff in there for you. For people who were watching it for last time, there was stuff in yeah. there for you. There really was something for everyone. And they, I mean, they even brought in Maeve, and I know that's a character yep. that a lot of people have been kind of clamoring for, especially yep. Reed fans. So we got a good bit of that, but... And, and that was yeah. really nice. It, I mean, it was obviously not great yeah. that it was because he was <laughs> bleeding yeah, out I know. in his head, but, you know, I'll take what I can get. Yeah, and I, I appreciated having Jane Lynch back for that, because Jane Lynch is just great. Oh, man, is she ever great. Yeah, I, I'm always going to be happy with more Jane Lynch on Criminal Minds. I, I mean, I think the obvious question slash frustration that we're going to have here is, okay, well, where where was Maxine during a lot of this? I mean, I'm, I'm guessing, guessing that it's that Criminal Minds only had so much money and they couldn't bring back Rachel Lee Cook. And that's cool. But you could have at least done something. So there could have been flowers beside the bed with a note that says... From Maxine. Yeah. That's that's all I needed. I just needed to know that she had been there. Yeah. Or that she had called in. Mm. Just something that maybe it's uh, uh, Garcia's coming in and someone else is coming out and it's like, oh, you just mi missed Max. You just left. There had to have been something there. And it was very strange to me that there was nothing there. Mm. And then there was nothing later when we saw that Garcia was going to be getting another job. That everyone was there with their partners, yeah. their husbands, wives, girlfriends, boyfriends. Everybody had everybody there. Max nowhere to be seen. And I, I want to leave this series finale feeling like there's that is still going on. And that there is a little bit of... 
that relationship is still happening, but like he's bleeding from his head in a hospital and she's nowhere to be found. It kind of worried my heart. I'm going to believe, I'm going to choose to believe moving forward that they're together, they're happy. And may, maybe it was just, maybe that scene that you're talking about, maybe it was cut out at the last minute. Because I, I, I'm assuming that because it's a series finale, it probably ran long and they probably had a lot of stuff that they weren't able to clue, include. But yeah. For me, it could have even just been, like I said, some flowers with a big Max blinking yeah. light. Just let me know she was in the room. Yeah, I, that, that part of it, I, I wish... That Max was there. I mean, I know we got to see a lot of other significant others throughout the finale. And I mean, that was nice. You've got Christy. She's making a return appearance. you got Will. And so, you know, yeah. JJ's personal life still going well. Everyone seems to be happy in their relationships. I mean, Ross. Rossi... Doza's there. Yeah. They're, they're getting a house. Yeah. Well, good, good for you guys. That was really fun. Was and, cool. you know, you even get to hear Prentice talk about, you know, cutting her hair, which I, uh, I, I wish we had kind of actually gotten to see that. I think that would have been fun. That would have been cool. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we saw... The... If for some reason we actually get to have more of this show, yeah. please have the new haircut. Yeah, yeah, give us new Prentice. I want to yeah. see. I think that would be fun. Yeah, I mean, Crystal's also back. Not exactly the happiest of circumstances for Crystal. <laughs> Crystal has to go through it more than almost anyone else in this episode. She's married to Rossi. She knows yeah. how it goes. Yeah, I mean, the good news is... The chameleon is done. I don't exactly, yeah. you know, I did not expect that Criminal Minds was going to end without wrapping up Everett Lynch, so. No, and I didn't expect that he was going to necessarily be carted off to jail or any of that stuff, because that's, we know that unsubs go to jail, and then they still manage to cause problems like Cat <laughs> Adams. So I feel that blowing up in the plane and then them getting the new plane, which was yeah. kind of a cool thing, you know, that was that was a good way to go out. I loved that this plane was like James Bond out, where it was just like, oh, and this does this, and here's a hidden gun, and it was just like, okay, this plane yeah. is something else. I love that Prentice had that line where she was just like, there are things about this plane that no one has. It reminded me of like, do you remember that old like Hanna Barbera cartoon, Wacky Races, where you had everybody with all the projectiles on their cars? Yep. It was like. This was totally the Criminal Minds version of it. I love that the the plane is actually the thing that saves the day yeah, I thought that in was the cool. end. I mean, usually it's just the setting for, here's your weekly dose of unsub exposition. And now it's like, okay, the plane is a character. We get the new plane in the end. Yeah. They still get the go wheels up. Were you surprised that they they really like hoodwinked us and all the promotional material? They were like, Rossi is retiring. <laughs> it's gonna be the end of the show. And then Rossi, just at the end of it, was like, Red Record Scratch, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, no, I was actually really surprised by that. Yeah. I thought that this was gonna be a really cool wrap up for him that he was gonna go on and go maybe go on a book tour or do something else. Yeah. There was Rossi just has so many different facets to his character and he does so many different things yeah. that I could have actually seen him retiring. But then when he was kind of like, oh, you know, I just, I can't, I can't leave it. I, I, it's in my soul kind of thing. I was like, yep, I can see it swinging back this way too, that he's going to be yeah. that guy that's going to be way past retirement, well into his 80s and 90s and 100s, and he's still going to be like, nope, wheels up. Yeah, you're going to have to drag Rossi out of there kicking and screaming at yeah. this point. I, that's at least my takeaway up and from I it. And I liked it. I yeah. liked it. I like the fact that most of the BAU is kind of still together. I mean, yep. the only person who's really, like, formally leaving is Garcia, I was worried that we were going to have the yet another, like, the umpteenth instance of, oh, here's another computer tech person who's going to work in Silicon Valley, because it feels like every show does that storyline now. Yeah, and they kind of did dip a little toe in that to be like, oh, I got this offer. I was yeah. like, oh, man. Here we go again. Here we go again. Yeah, no. So I'm really glad that she's staying in town, yeah. and it was nice to see her celebrated. Yeah. And I will say this. We talked about Maxine being yeah. saying, I found it strange that... Morgan was not at this party and I know she's not leaving town or something whatever but this is a huge career move for her like yeah. she is leaving a job that they were at together that meant a lot to both of them she's 
he is her best friend. Like, he's not there to celebrate that. I understand why, but just the same. Yeah. Put some flowers on the table <laughs> with a big sign that says, I love you from Morgan. <laughs> just put Shamar's <laughs> face, like, on the front of the flowers. That's right. That would have been enough to make people happy. I mean... I didn't, it's weird, because it didn't bother. Or even just a yeah. line, where it's like, she walks in, she sees all the flower stuff, it's like, wow, look at all these flowers. And Rossi's like, they're from Morgan, he sent them. Yeah, I think that would have been cool. I, I I didn't necessarily need to see Morgan, just because I feel like, you know, they're they're close, so maybe he'll go and you know, buy her dinner at some point after the fact. But I did think we need, probably could have benefited from some sort of mention. But speaking of people and dinner... I mean, I can't believe it's taken us 10 minutes to talk about the fact that Garbez is now actually canon on Criminal Minds. It happened. High five to everybody out there also who wanted that. Because from the minute he came onto the show, I was really excited about the possibility of this idea. I just... There was something there. There has always been something there between them. Like a fun chemistry a little little zhuzh going yeah. on i don't know man so i know that when he got together with lisa some people really liked it yeah i was just kind of lukewarm on it see what i did there luke uh, uh, okay. anyways i was lukewarm on it i didn't really feel a lot of chemistry going on so when these episodes started and he's like oh yeah we broke up i'm like here we go <laughs> Yes, he is single. It is the end of the road. Make this happen, and here we go. So, Luke has asked her out to yeah. dinner now that they're no longer working together, yeah. and she said yes. And I was glad that they did it that way yeah. as well. So professional from Luke Alves. Yeah, that it was, okay, I don't want to, you know, date where I work, so now that that's out of the way. Yeah. that's well, It was cool. I, I liked it. I thought it was a really nice yeah. moment. They didn't push it too far, just a dinner, it's a good start. It just, it gives you that hope. It gives you that hope. It's a reason to smile. It's something to think about in the future. I I like that they went there. It is a nice little nod for a lot of fans out there. And, you know, Criminal Minds has tried to steer clear of a lot of the workplace relationships over the time. But this was sort of a testament to how much people really like these characters in this relationship. The, (laughs) I, I like, I like it too, but I know you are especially a Garvez fan, so... It's always cool to see the geeky girls getting the hunky boys. It's just, it's cool. Yeah, it's a cool thing. It doesn't happen a lot. No, and I think having it on this show and having it happen this way where these two characters really know each other so much and it's just it's just proof yeah. positive that Luke recognizes what all of us recognized for a long time, and that is Garcia is awesome, and, you know, he should want to be with her. Well, it's cool, because now you can go back and watch these episodes and kind of still see that yeah. specialness that was going on between this whole time, and that yeah. the thing that was holding him back was that they worked together. Yeah. It and doesn't mean that the feelings weren't there. It's just, yeah. you know, there was a block, and now it's gone. I also just like it because it gives Luke a proper sort of into his story, and I feel like we have that for almost everyone. I mean, probably the one bummer I still have about the entire final season is Tara, really. I mean, she she's there, and she's there for to support other characters, But I, and I know she had some stuff in season 14, but it just feels like these 10 episodes, we really didn't actually learn anything about her at all. No, she did not get any sort of spotlight at all, which I thought was really strange because we did get a spotlight for everyone else including matt who's also a newer character like it was uh yeah it was a little disappointing to say the least that there wasn't something i was yeah something i know that and i I mean and i know that tara hasn't always been a character that's been the most featured on this show and you know and i know that simmons had beyond borders and all that but even still yeah i i think just Five or ten minutes of screen time, or at least a subplot for her, would have been nice. But I think overall, the series finale, what we probably were expecting going in, was resolution on Everett, Mm -hmm. nostalgia, fun moments. And a really nice last couple of scenes. Like, we had them at that big party. That was really fun, and I enjoyed that. But actually seeing them back at the office for their last sort of moments together where they're all having their their teas and their crazy mugs and yeah. then the unicorn pen and everything that was going on. Just and that moment where it's like, oh, we got a case and yeah. you know, we've got the ground team all getting into the elevator, yeah. wheels up, we had our last one, we get to see all of them together. And you know 
after leaving this episode that they are still out there. They are still heroes. They are still yeah. taking care of business for us. And that's been what's been so great about this show over the years is, yeah, it's got really dark content that hurts our souls trying yeah. to watch it. But we know that these heroes are out there and they are taking care of things for us. And now we know that they are still together yeah. and they are still doing it for us. I think it was really important that Criminal Minds ended this way. And I mean, I, you know, we can have quibbles about little things here or there, but I think shutting down the BAU or having everybody go off on separate jobs, it would have just eliminated, I yeah. think, what we love about this show so much. And that is that even though they're fictional, I mean, they're based on real people and it yeah. is a show that's sort of about... You know, there are there's comfort in dark times and there are people who are out there trying to help you. And yeah. I think this ending celebrates that and celebrates these characters. It's all like hitting me really hard, like all of a sudden right now. It's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss this show so much. I can't believe it's over. I know. I'm like, I can't believe it's well, over. We're going to do another video, though, and we'll talk about the idea of a season 16, if it could happen, how it could happen. Yeah. And uh, so stay tuned for that. But... Let's get your thoughts on the series finale. We are all going to deal with this together. So tell us what you thought about it. If there's anything you wish was there, if you think the ending was perfect in the comments. And if you do like this video, give us a like, subscribe, and you can support us further by checking that link in the description to the Carter Matt store. And we'll see you guys here next time.